everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another 15 minute mixer. I absolutely love that you gals love these mixers because it's just a chance for us to get caught up, chat a little bit and answer some questions. And so that's what I'm going to do today in this 15 minute mixer as I'm going to set the uh, timer for 15 minutes in case you want to work on a project for 15 minutes, then you know you're done or you can just wait till I'm done yapping. And then of course you can be done with your project. You can do that either way. <laughs> yes. So the three questions, of course, let me get my timer started. Yes. Start. Yes, there we go. 15 minutes. Okay, so the one of the three questions I keep getting a lot lately has been how do I organize stickers in basically this size right here? Because I've been building kits and uh, showing layouts and things like that because, you know, I have done a lot talking about this channel about my sticker binders and my die cut binders and my uh, stickers and chipboard. <laughs> yes. So of course I'll have the videos listed below where I chat more about that, but there are some stickers that just don't land in those binders because of one, I have too many and two, I don't want every sticker I own into that binder. And why would that be? And it's simply because if I travel, I don't want to take a binder. Second of all, if I just need a finishing little touch, I have those little mini sticker binders that started the whole thing. And three, when I'm building kits or in a challenge or just working on a start to finish layout sometimes I just rely on my 6 by 12 sticker sheets okay and it simply sometimes just comes down to the fact that I have a lot of stickers and so they would not all fit in a binder and I have said this several times lately that when it comes to organizing a product you don't have to do it a one for all. Not every sticker you own has to be in this binder. Not every sticker you own has to be in that basket. And not every sticker you own has to be, you know, on your shelf over there to the right. It doesn't have to be that way. So you can organize your product and your supplies in the way you scrap. And for me, I need a little bit of everything because I scrap in a little bit of every way. <laughs> I really do. I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that because I don't want to get bored in this hobby. So that's why I do that. And then plus two, look how many six by 12 sticker sheets I have. <laughs> okay. Now, before I started my sticker binder, this was the binder or this was the, you know, the drawer that I had for my stickers and for my six by 12, this worked perfect, but it did not work for my 12 by 12. And sometimes there's little stragglers. So that's why they ended up in a sticker, a sticker binder. But for my six by 12, this is just a little binder. It goes in like a tiered, uh, drawer system. I got Tuesday morning, like 12 years ago, honestly, it's been a long time. And so this just fits six by 12 stickers. I mean, perfectly. Sometimes I have to cut the uh, header off as who the manufacturer was. And that is why I have my six by 12s in here. And that's why when you see me pull kits together or certain start to finish, that's where they, uh, that's where they from this little drawer right here. And plus, uh, since this is not a major big drawer, this is the allotted space I have for stickers. Of course I have more room. I could get a lot more stickers in there. But I'm trying not to buy too many supplies this year. And so also what I keep in this is my photo corners. I have a whole stack of them. And I even have a bag of loose ones. My photo corners go right in the front. Now I did recently get asked a question too. What do I do about sticker books? And truly for me, I only have one sticker book. Maybe two of these. But I don't really have sticker books. But if I did, um, if I had a lot... I would think about, do you need to have them in a book form? You could tear them apart, put them which you want them by color, do you want them by theme? You could do that. You don't have to keep it in a book form if it, you know, just because it comes in a book form. You don't have to keep it that way. But I only have one and I just put it in the front here. And you can see these ones in the front are simply just smaller ones and I have them by size. But once you get to about right here, this is all in alphabetical order by manufacturer. Now, over the years, I've changed this. At one time, this was by theme. I had Christmas and Valentine's and fall, and then there was some you didn't know where to put. So for me, what I do is that since I think of, I think of these uh, six by 12 sticker sheets by manufacturer, so that's what I do. I have them all by manufacturer. So there's basic gray, Bella Boulevard, crepe paper, uh, more crepe paper, crepe paper, Dollar Tree, <laughs> Doodle Bug, Echo Park, Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean, uh, and then Lily B, My Mind's Eye, there went something flying and then also two pebbles and then I have all kinds of simple stories in there 
and then Teresa Collins, and then We Are Memory Keepers, and I think that's where it ends. So those are all in alphabetic order, but that is just simply what that is. They sit in there so easy, and then I just flip. I mean, it's all about access <laughs> when it comes to this drawer, uh, because that's what I, I want quick access to these. Uh, so I don't all have, I don't have every sticker I own, in those sticker binders. So I wanted to show that. I've gotten a lot of questions about that lately. And then also too, right there's my photo corners, easy peasy lemon squeeze it. And you can see, I can bring this whole drawer to my desk if I need be, but I just simply pull it out and I reach what I want. Again, these are my manufacturers, easy to reach into because I know what I have. I don't know how I do that. I can just remember what I have. And uh, so again, that's how I do those sticker sheets that you see in my kits and things like that. So now let's talk about inspiration uh we've been talking about that lately in our summer space shape up and then also too i had to start the finish layout uh talking about these two pages right here okay so i will move this hefty little drawer here because that takes a little bit of power <laughs> And you know I gotta put that on the floor. Yes. Okay, so in this recent start to finish, I had talked about scrap looking scrap lifting yourself. And then if there's just a page you really, really like, whether you do it or someone else does it, there's nothing wrong with taking a picture so you have it for inspiration. So I had said that I would share what uh some inspiration that I did before pre uh, Pinterest days. <laughs> so I wanted to show that. Yes, because you know I took a photo of this. So where do I keep a photo of that so I can be reminded to scrap lift because I don't keep this out and about you know all the time I have to put it away in my album eventually <laughs> okay so that's what I have as I simply have a photo box now mind you this has been years in the making and this was before uh, Pinterest days okay and let's see it was also before Instagram you know what I'm talking about it was before social media so if you wanted to have a picture of your favorite design or something you know you had to create it yourself so that's what this entire box is <laughs> it is photos of layouts that i have uh, liked over the years and they are by nicole mcgorick nicole mcgorick sport or laura vegas or jen gallagher uh who else i'm trying to think becky fleck you know, uh, all the gals at uh, Jelly Bean Soup, things like that. A lot of them. <laughs> Some of these I absolutely have. Allison Davis. I have a whole chunk that's nothing but Allison Davis. Absolutely. And I think that's what these orange markers were at one time. Yeah, see, this is all Allison Davis right here. <laughs> yeah, big fan of her work. And then, of course, these were just images that I got from designer. Remember when blogs blogs was where we shared inspiration and so i would go to i had a series of blogs and some of you are going to shake your heads because you did the same thing you'd wake up in the morning there were certain people you visited every morning certain blogs you went to and so if i liked uh, uh layouts or projects they did i would keep a copy of that and then every so often i would print them out and again they would be in wallets two to a four by six summer fullerton laura vegas i can just look at these and know whose work this is Absolutely. Jana Eubanks, mm -hmm. the gals at Pebbles. There's more Laura. Laura. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Just and Nicole, 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 Nicole. And so can, at one time, you can see these holes here that I had them on those little binder rings, but that got to be too many. So now I have a whole box full. Okay. And then over the years, if there was something that didn't inspire me, now, you can now have been scrapbooking a long time when my inspiration box <laughs> is this big. But this is what we did way back in the day. You had to keep an image because magazines, you only got to see so many. And it maybe wasn't always your style. And then I remember one time there was a lot of Becky Higgins work I used to keep and Lisa Berenstein. And then, you know, gradually their style didn't fit my style. So I would get rid of those and then I would replace it with the gals that was my style. And so, yeah, see, oh, look at that. More Laura Vegas. Mm -hmm. all, and then a two peas, all those lovely gals. Yeah, I would do that. Very, very fun. Just look at that. <laughs> I just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. And so that's where I got all of my inspiration at one time. I would have to visit blogs and then I saved them and then I would absolutely print them out. And this was my inspiration book, my magazines. This was my go-to for a lot of my sketches before sketches became popular. That's what I did. And I still have this inspiration box. I haven't looked at it probably in the last 
couple years because I no longer do this. I no longer keep a copy. Uh, I mean, there's once in a while I'll keep a copy. I think I maybe have eight images on my computer right now of something that caught my eye on Pinterest. Uh, I don't visit Pinterest very often, maybe once. I say once every seven months. <laughs> I don't visit very often because I think it's a time sucker. It is for me. So I stopped, I stopped that. Uh, so I think I hit maybe have about 10 or 12 images on my computer that I saw something that caught my eye. And so I just save it as a photo and then I just simply print it out. That's what I do. Okay. And most of these are in wallets. Okay. And uh, Nicole had showed some where she had done some embellishments and things like that. And I had did a few close-ups, things like that. But it's mostly to, to a photo. Yeah, and I printed all these out over the years. That's my inspiration box. <laughs> yes. So uh, if you have pages that you really enjoy from a certain designer or a certain website or a certain manufacturer, you know, you can save them. And then now you can just save them on your computer, on your phone, and create albums and library. But back in the day... We didn't have that option. We didn't have iPhones. We didn't even have cell phones. So this is what we did. We uh, copied the images ourselves and printed them. <laughs> Boy, this is like, uh, this is going back to the old days. Absolutely. I even also did it with home decor products, projects too. And there's some cards. Now those are by Becky Higgins. And uh, so there's some cards too. Okay. It's not all scrapbook pages, but the majority is scrapbook pages absolutely so i definitely wanted to show that because i got asked if i could show that and i promised i would so that's my inspiration box aka before pinterest and instagram and iphones <laughs> yes that is my inspiration box it's quite hefty and i don't every once in a while in the past when i would go through it if i saw something that didn't interest me i would throw it away Okay, because then every so often I would replace, but I haven't done that cycle for a period of time because everything is now on your screen. Absolutely. So I wanted to show that. So, so the third question I get asked a lot is how do I have these embellishment packs in my space that I can easily grab them when I'm making kits or some of my start to finish layouts because not every sticker I own is in a sticker binder. So where do I have these and how do I have these? I get asked that a lot and it's so simple. You're going to laugh at how simple it is, but I got this idea from my favorite YouTube gal, Nicole Mackin. And so I will I will show you that. And so this is how you can organize embellishment packs. Okay. And it is simply in, I have a bucket bin is what it's called. It's just a, a decorative piece, but it's just a bucket bin. And so I'm going to hope none of that falls out. And so what Nicole had showed, this was several years ago in her kit love series is that she bought one of these or two of these great big bucket bins. And I think she got hers at Hobby Lobby and that's where this came from. Uh, and then she had stored her kits in that for the month as she was doing her kit love series. And so I thought, what a great idea. So I got one of these bucket bins and it's just a metal tin nothing too fabulous uh, it matches my decor for my room and I use that to store my embellishment packs now why would I need this when I do have sticker binders and die cut binders and <laughs> chipboard binders and color drawers it's just because simply I want to keep some um, embellishment packs together in packaging because either it's new to me or it's a certain manufacturer or it belongs to a certain collection until I'm done playing with it. Or sometimes it's just new items and when I have new things I want to keep them as new as I can. And so uh, you can see in the front I have some small things. Okay, see I have some small things. There's some, some Chamel, some paper has small things. And then as you go in the back, that's where I had these Illustrated Faith. This was a gift from Anne. So uh, I ha just recently got these. And so, of course, I just stick them in the back. I hope I can see what I'm doing there. Okay? And so they just go in the back. There's something there. <laughs> okay? This is quite a nice arrangement of supplies. Okay? It's very, very light. I can bring it back and forth to my desk, but I don't. It just sits on... A shelf in my space and it actually serves as a decorative piece in my room um, because you can see it's just loveliness that's all it is loveliness and so if I get something new I stick it in there if I'm putting together kits and I want to do it quickly this is where I'm going if I want to do a start to finish or I'm working on a scrapbook challenge for someone else and I want to do something quick this is where I'm going sometimes I don't want to pull out the binders sometimes I don't want to pull out my color drawers <laughs> I just use uh, sticker packs, embellishment packs, that type of thing. So as I showed earlier with my 6x12 stickers, I have them someplace else. It's the same way here. I don't have every embellishment I own in a binder or in a drawer. They're simply, as I bought them, 
as these sticker packs or embellishment packs, embellishment packs, <laughs> sticker packs, puffy stickers, um, you know, just things like that. I just simply have them. And you see, well, there's our 15 minutes. And you see how quick it is to access these because it's just leafing through, picking what you want, putting it in a kit, using it on a page, and putting it back in here. But you can see it's all in packaging, okay? And so I don't have to worry about dust, but I do rifle through this quite a bit. And so it's just an idea I got from Nicole, and I will have her channel linked below. And it's just so simple <laughs> because I don't have a drawer big enough for this. And these are out and about, so I don't forget about them. They're protected from the dust. And it's just simply fun to pick out some fast product when you want to do a fast page. So I definitely want to show that. And again, I'll flip this over, and that's what that is. It's a great big... Can you imagine if you got this as a gift? <laughs> Yes, this bucket bin with all these packs of embellishments. Sing howdy doody. Yes, <laughs> isn't that fun? But I wanted to show that because I've gotten a lot of questions lately. How do I do that? And it's simply just in a bucket bin and they're just stuck in there. And sometimes I, I don't push everything to the bottom. Did you notice that? I don't push everything down to the down to the bottom. I just put them in there lightly and they just stick up like that because I have quite I have quite a bit in there. <laughs> yes. And so again, it's just stuck on one of my uh, drawer units over there. So it's easy to get to. And again, uh, it's just pretty. That's all it is. And But I have loved this from day one. I don't know how many years I've done it this way. I'd say probably four years. And I've just always kept it. Just have never... It's just easy access. I'm all about that. So, well, I guess I shouldn't say that too loud. Yeah, but easy access for my supplies. Absolutely. So that's all I have for this 15-minute mixer. I hope I answered a couple questions. And if you have some other questions you want me to cover in another 15-minute mixer, or if there's certain things you want to show, you want me to show in my space in a 15-minute mixer, please list below because I'm always up for the challenge. Absolutely. So come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.